with Daryl Trimmer. I'm Daryl Trimmer. I've been practicing yoga for the last 12 years. Uh, my main style of practice is vinyasa yoga. Uh, thank you for joining today as we go through a nice, gentle, uh, twisting sequence. All right. So we're going to get started on all fours, coming into a tabletop. All right. Having the knees just underneath the hips, hands under the shoulders. Right, and as we push the floor away from us with the arms, right, we'll start to round the spine, pulling in the belly. Right, and as we go the other way, we'll lift the breastbone up, pull the belly button down towards the floor, and let those shoulders run down the back. As we go the other way, again, finding that cat rounding the spine, using the stuff on the front to open up the things on the back, and as we start to squeeze the stuff on the back, we open up that stuff on the front as we continue to find movement through the spine nice and early on. And generally in the yoga practice, as we extend the spine, we give an inhale. And as we flex the spine, we give a little bit of an exhale. Go through just a couple more. And about another 10 seconds or so, and it doesn't matter which one that we're on, right? And again, as always, finding our own pace through them. Last one. So, next time that we get well, wherever we are, right, we'll come into a neutral spine. And step the left foot to the back of the mat and have the toes pushing down. We're going to keep the right knee exactly where it is. As you lift the right foot, we're going to pivot that right foot over to the left. Again, notice how the knee hasn't moved at all, glued to the floor. Now we're going to send the hips back a bit. Take the left knee just behind the right ankle as we pull the right leg forward. Again, keeping that knee directly underneath the hip so that it's not in. All right, with that knee under the hip, Take the hip out to the right and then send it towards that back right corner of the mat. And we should feel a nice little stretchy sensation through the outer right hip. And if you want a little bit of movement here, you can even think about coming up a little bit and then sending the hip back. If you just want to stay steady in this pose, you can just stay steady with that hip continuing to push towards the back of the right mat. Again, the practice is yours, so make it your own. Uh, just another couple seconds. And we'll bring everything back into neutral. We'll lift the left knee off the floor, swing the right knee back, and again, send that left knee back down. All right, changing sides, step the right foot to the back of the mat, toes push down. Again, that left knee is going to stay directly underneath the hip. Lift the left foot, swing it over to the right. Drop the right knee down behind the left leg and then swing that right foot forward, maybe in line with the knee or maybe not, right? We just want to think about that foot coming a little bit further towards that right hand. Again, with the knee still underneath the hip, take the left hip, out to the left, and now we're going to sink that hip back towards that l back left corner. Again, looking for that sensation or stretch right through this area here. Again, same two options. You can hold it steady in a static stretch, or you can have a little bit of dynamic movement, bringing the hips forward a bit, and then sinking them back. And of course, whenever we're doing, we're looking to go with slow intention and with purpose. Uh, just another couple seconds. And as we bring the hips back, we'll lift the right knee off the floor, swing the left foot back, and take that right knee back down to the floor. 
As we walk the hands back, we'll take a high kneel from here and take the right foot and step it out to the right. All right, from here, we're going to have those right toes spin up towards the ceiling. All right, once we have those toes pushing up, think about digging the heel into the floor. Take your right hand on top of the right leg, maybe palms facing up, maybe palm is down, choice is yours. Send the right hand towards your toes. All right, take the left hand just to the front of the shoulder and then press the shoulder back a little bit so that we know that we're not just folding forward and closing off the front side of ourselves. And once we open up the shoulder, you're going to reach that left arm overhead. All right, feeling that stuff through that left side, just kind of popping out, All right, opening up here. Continuing to find that support through that right heel as it pushes down. Just stay steady. Find your breath. And just find the sensations and feelings that we're getting from the areas. Just another breath here. And we're going to come up. And once we're here, if you need blocks, you're going to grab your blocks. But we're going to take the hands down to the floor and then shift that left foot back. So now we're more with a front straight right leg rather than that right leg out to the side. Think about pulling yourself forward here. We're going to have that left hand stay exactly where it is, maybe down, maybe on fingertips, or maybe resting on a block if we need to elevate a little bit. All right, we're going to take the right hand, just the inside of that right hip, and you're going to pull the right hip back, start to open up that right shoulder to the side. And again, with that right hand or that right thumb, just the crease of that right hip, you're going to pull it, shoulder opens, Keep everything exactly the same, continuing to find that space here through the back of that right leg. Good, just another breath. And we'll take the right hand back down to the floor. Bend the right knee so we have that foot just underneath the knee. Again, we're going to take that left foot, spin it over to the right. Now take the right arm on top of the right leg, left hand on the hip. We're going to sit, start to slide the left knee down towards the inside or down towards the floor so that we get stuff on the inside of that left leg on stretch. And again, same thing as when we're in that pose earlier. Think about the shoulder opening up the side. Once we get that, take the left arm up overhead. If you have space here, hand can come down to the floor. You can continue to have it on top of that right leg. And that same sensation, that same feeling, that same area that we're getting stretched, send the breath into that area. Just another breath. Take the left hand down, and we're going to slide the left foot back. Lift the knee. The hand should just be to the inside of the right leg. And then we'll spin that left heel down, same position that we're in, just with the back knee up here. Right arm comes on top of the right leg. Take the left hand onto the hip. Again, spin the hip open. When it stops, it stops. Same thing. Hand can come to the front of the shoulder, spin it open. When it stops, it stops. Same option, you can take that left arm up overhead if it's comfortable. And then same option with that right hand. You can bring it down to the floor, onto a block, or continue to keep it on top of the leg. All right, so no matter which option that we choose with that right arm, we keep the body opened up to the side so that when that hand comes down, we don't just fall and look down towards our, our toes. And just another breath here. And again, as we come all the way up, straighten that right leg. Bring the arms out to the side. 
Good, so to reach the right hand as far forward as you can. Kick the left hip towards the back of the room. And then taking the hand just on top of the shin, reaching the left arm up. So as soon as that arm stops, that's exactly where we're just gonna send the hand down and then lift it up so that we're not trying to reach and then come all the way down and then find ourselves folding over that right leg. Right, we want to think about evenness through the sides. Again, same as everything else, body stays or torso stays open towards the left side of your room. And just another breath. Bend the right knee, take the hands down, take the left knee down to the floor, step the right leg back. And again, we're going to walk those hands back a little bit. Good. Step the left leg out to the side. And again, spin the toes so that they're facing up towards the ceiling. And bring that left hand towards the left leg, maybe palm down or up. Take the right hand to the front of the shoulder. Again, push the shoulder back a bit. Right, keeping everything open. Reach the right arm overhead. Again, feeling everything kind of spilling out towards the right. And a lot of it here is just being comfortable in an uncomfortable position and then just trying to make it less uncomfortable through time. Just another breath. Okay, we're going to take the hands down to the floor or onto blocks. Spin the right knee back or right foot back behind your right knee. Again, if you need your blocks, this is where we have our blocks, pressing them down or again, fingertips. Think about pulling yourself forward. And right hand is going to stay where it is. We can even push it down into the floor or onto our block. Take your left thumb, pull it to the inside of that left hip. And again, as you pull the left hip back, open up that left shoulder to that same side. And as that left shoulder starts to open and the left hip kicks back, we start to feel a little bit more of an intense sensation through the back of the left leg. Again, just be comfortable in that uncomfortableness. Again, just another breath. Take the left hand down. Take your right foot, lift it, pivot it off to the left. Then we're going to bend the right knee, or excuse me, that left knee. Take the left arm on top of the left leg, right hand on the hip. And again, we'll use the hand, open the hip. We'll use the hand to open the shoulder. All right, keeping everything just nice and open to that right. Right arm can reach up. Again, maybe if you have that space, left hand can come down to the floor. But as always, we don't need to find, I guess, the toughest position. We find a spot that works for us while still being mindful of how everything is positioned throughout our body and remembering the intent of what we're doing. And just another breath here. And we'll take the right hand down. Again, lift the right foot, spin it back. Lift your right knee. Now we're going to press the right heel down to the floor, left arm on top of the left leg, right hand on the waist. Again, same position. Again, just the back leg is up. Take the hand, open up the hip. Take the hand, open up the shoulder. Again, that right arm can reach up towards the sky or overhead. Same thing, left arm can stay on the leg or left hand can come down to the floor. 
again, just making sure that no matter which position that we choose, that everything through your sides are nice and even. And as we come up, straight and left leg, arms out to the side. Reach the left arm as far forward as we can. Kick the right hip out behind you. Take the left hand down onto the shin, so just letting it fall wherever it was, and the right arm back towards the sky. And continuing to kick that outer right hip back. Right. Continue to find that length through your side. So again, we're not looking to crunch towards the floor, but find some evenness. So we'll look down towards the floor on that left foot, bend the knee, take the hands down, lower everything back into your tabletop. And then for a moment, we'll take the big toes together knees apart, find yourself in a child's pose, arms reaching towards the front forehead, presses down to the floor. the hand, come back, and then take a seat. And we're going to grab our blocks. So if you don't have blocks, you can find some books or something else that gives you a little bit of height away from the floor. But if you've got blocks, we'll think about them on that highest height. All right, take the blocks forward, step the right foot between the hands, All right, we'll end up with that right knee just on top of the right ankle. All right, and once we send that left leg back a little bit, push the hands down into the, f into the block. You're trying to push the blocks away from you. Tuck your left toes, lift the knee up. And once you get that left knee lifted up, we're gonna bring that right leg towards straight. And some of us might have it just a little bit less bent than it started with, or maybe a little bit more less bent or even fully straight. But whichever one that we're at, I was thinking about pulling forward, shoulders run down the back, right? And we're looking for some length through the spine. So if you're just rounding here and you can feel everything concaving on the front, right? Think chest pulling towards that top edge of the mat. Left hand stays where it is. We're going to take your right thumb to the inside of that right hip, and I want you to pull that hip back a little bit. Open up that right shoulder towards the right. So we're getting that rotation here. All right now, once you've pulled that back slightly, take the right hand just to the sacrum or that lower back. Right? We can feel if it starts to slide off a little bit. We want to try to keep some evenness through the hips. As you push down through the left arm, that right shoulder continues to open. That sacrum or lower back is level to the floor. And then you're going to reach that right arm up towards the sky. And some of us might even be a little bit more off to the side, just depending on how much rotation that we have in our spine. And just another couple of breaths. And giving ourselves some time to feel into this position. So bring the right hand down. We'll re-bend that right knee. Take the left knee down to the floor. And again, step the right knee back. All right, same thing as we change sides. Set the left foot between the hands. Again, we'll have that little base starting position. Knee just over top of the ankle. I mean, slide the right knee back a little bit. Tuck your toes. Lift the right knee up. Use your hands or arms as support. Push, pull yourself forward. 
And okay, we'll start to straighten that left leg. And of course, I'm using it as a relative term. You can think less bent left leg, anywhere from fully bent to all the way straight. As long as we're able to keep that length through our spine here, pulling forward. Again, just be aware of that rounding, right? You could feel the stuff collapsing on the fronts. So we're looking forward to open up, think breastbone towards the front edge of your mat. All right, we're gonna take that left thumb to the inside of the left hip, pull it in, and then press it back. Oh, now from here, we start to open up that left shoulder to the left. Take the right hand just to that lower back or on the sacrum. And use that right hand as support, continuing to push down. As we start to find a little bit more rotation through the spine, being aware that we don't want the hand to fall off, right? Letting that right hip collapse down. So to reach the right arm out to the side, and think about rotating from the spine, not a rotation at the hip. Uh, just a, another couple of breaths. Again, giving us some time to feel into the posture. Uh, take the left hand down, bend the left knee, take the right knee to the floor, and again, step that left knee back. And if you've got blocks or anything else, you can place them off to the side and take the hips to the heel, knees apart, and again, we'll end up back into that child's pose. And letting those arms reach out in front, sending the hips down to the heels. And we'll slide ourselves forward into a sphinx, taking the legs back, bringing the front of the hips down to the floor, elbows under the shoulders, or if it's too much, you can always take the elbows a little bit further in front of the shoulders, just not back in like that. All right, so once you press down through the forearms, think elbows pulling back towards you. We're going to have those toes pointing back. Once those toes point back, squeeze the right leg nice and tight. So you're going to push the top of the right foot into the floor. The kneecap lifts up. Try not to change anything. Maybe the leg lifts, maybe it doesn't. Right, you're going to work to lift the right leg off the floor while keeping it straight. And just think back of the leg and the butt, doing all of the work here and continuing to push down through those arms so that we don't collapse in on ourselves. Good, bring the right leg down and you can relax the leg here. And the same thing on the left side. Push the top of the left foot into the floor, lift the kneecap up. And we're gonna squeeze the butt, squeeze the back of the leg, lift the left leg up, keeping it straight. And just another breath, lowering that left leg down to the floor. And you can relax all the way down. Maybe a little bit of a rest here using the back of the hands as the pillow as the forehead comes down. And 
and turning over to lie down on your back. We'll have the feet somewhat underneath the knees and feet maybe shoulder distance or hip distance apart, maybe a little bit narrower, a little bit wider, right? We'll take the arms just off to the sides. And push the lower back down into the floor. Squeeze your butt, lift the hips. So we find ourselves into a little bit of a bridge here. And just gently rolling up onto the shoulders, using the heels as we drive them down to give us that support, rather than really pushing the arms into the floor. Those arms can be relaxed. Slowly lower the hips down to the floor. And we'll shuffle the feet apart and just let those knees sink towards one another. And relax those shoulders. Again, just taking a moment here, being steady. We're going to straighten the legs, let them rest out in front. Then you can close the eyes, right? And taking again a little bit of time for yourself at the end, just to relax and decompress in your Shavasana. And as always, thank you so much for joining. We hope to see you next time. TV viewer.